What's up guys, welcome back. I just wanted to film sort of a quick follow-up to my videos on sharpening these Sandrin tungsten carbide knives. During the video where I try the different stones and sharpening methods, edge trailing, edge leading strokes, things like that, and different stropping methods, I sort of began to sense out some general guidelines for myself and it seems that the way that you sharpen tungsten carbide is very different from the way that you sharpen steel. And the main reason for this difference is ductility. There is very, very little or no ductility in a tungsten carbide knife. Now ductile or being able to be formed or bent or stretched is a property that gives steel this ability to take a really fine apex or even form a burr on the edge. Tungsten carbide doesn't really form a burr and it doesn't really have the ductility to maintain this super 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 fine edge with most conventional stones. So just wanted to give some information here at the end of my experience with it, and a few tips. I tried this and no, not really. Like I tried to put a 400 grit or a 600 grit on one side, but actually the larger pieces of abrasive, they put so much pressure as it passes by the apex that it actually chips out big chips. Now, in a tungsten carbide knife, your goal is actually to chip really, really, really small. You'll always have an apex that's somewhat chipped away, but you wanna get it thinner and thinner and thinner. So the best rule of thumb is to use a lot of strokes really, really light with fine abrasives to get it there. I've heard a lot of guys have good luck with like buffing wheels and stuff like that on grinders because it goes so fast. You can put a lot of distance across the edge very, very gently. So things like that are gonna be your friend. Larger abrasives, they work for reprofiling it. It will take a while, but you can reprofile one of these. I've actually reprofiled this one too. A different edge angle slightly because I took out that micro bevel that Sandrin had left in it just to test what it does at the sort of native angle that was on the secondary bevel. So they can be reprofiled. Dual grit doesn't really work. I tried doing a 400 grit on one side and then going forever on the other side with finer stones to see if I could get sort of a uh, apex with some texture in it and then bring that fine stone in but even then when you bring the fine side in the the roughness of the coarse side causes it to continue to chip so I found with this that going finer and gentler has been the best operative edge Number two, mirror finish. Now, you can probably see that I've got like a decent mirror finish on this edge. It's kind of hard to see. Um, can you put a mirrored edge on a tungsten carbide knife? Well, so far, I have not had a lot of luck with getting it to perform like a really, really fine mirrored edge. You can, yes, get a very, very good finish on the edge bevel, but when it comes to the performance of a super, super ultra fine apex that some of you guys would be used to, it's very difficult to get it because when you're working with microchipping, it's really difficult to get it to chip to a small enough apex that it feels the same way that an edge feels on a traditional steel knife. So mirror finish, definitely. Mirror edge, I'm gonna say no from my experience. If any of you have had any luck with it, please give me some tips. If you're gonna do a low investment sort of care package so that you can resharpen this edge effectively without spending tons and tons of money, what is my recommendation? Well, I find that the metallic bonded plates they're good for reprofiling and the venive diamond plates they're also good for reprofiling but the metallic bonded plates my easy lap plates or like dmt leave you with such a rough edge it's difficult to get that flattened or chippedness out of the edge with your fine stones so i'd recommend if you plan on getting one of these and using it so hard that you'll ever need to do any reprofiling i'd recommend a venive water stone 
a Veneve Diamond Waterstone or similar because it can reshape the edge, but that consistent surface of the Waterstone and the fact that the uh, abrasives are embedded in it and you just are getting the tips of it means that you can apply lighter pressure and then you have an edge that's repairable once you get to your stropping. If you want to get one of these and you just want to keep it sharp, you don't ever want to have to reprofile, then the best luck that I had actually was an aluminum plate with some 0.5 micron DMT diamond spray. And what I'd say is get your stropping mechanism ready, whether you use that or a different one, and then do it before you need it. I'd say use this for several weeks and then do a little bit of a stropping before it really loses its cutting power. If you do that, every month or two depending on your use then you'll really be able to keep it from taking a huge amount of damage and you would always have a relatively sharp edge i would say that the spiderco ceramic stone and the falcon even ceramic stone had surprisingly good results but they don't remove enough material to be a good reprofiler you could use them as an edge finishing device and do something similar to the strop one funny little thing that i did figure out was taking cardboard with nothing in it and just doing like a hundred laps on one side and a hundred laps on the other side and then 30 on one side and then 30 on the other side it slowly slowly made the apex a little bit finer the cardboard actually took some of the rough spots out of it and polished it relatively effectively and actually the best performance that i've had on slicing paper was going from the veneve stone then up to the aluminum plate and then over to cardboard for the final little dialing in of the edge. And I'll give a, pic a video here of how that slicing paper, now it's not as fine, I haven't got it as fine as a regular steel edge. It will slice very well, it will draw cut a little bit, and it won't push cut. It struggles to shave, it will take off a few hairs, but it won't shave super effectively. Here at the end of this video, I'm going to try a couple other things. I'm going to put some normal silica in a piece of cardboard. Then we'll compare the best numbers. We'll do the cardboard to, compared to the cardboard with silica compared to uh, some lapping film. And I'm going to take it a little slower and gentler with the lap, lapping film this time. Anyway, those are my tips and tricks on tungsten carbide. I hope you're having a great day. Um, if you're thinking about getting some of this stuff, definitely, definitely choose your instruments and your methods carefully. But it can be really cool stuff and it can hold an edge for a really, really long time.
Well, that's the best working edge, smoothest slice on paper on the 0 0.1 micron um, diamond film. It will draw cut pretty, uh, pretty well. Won't quite push cut, I don't think. But that's approaching like what most, yeah, not, no push cut. But that's approaching what most knife guys would consider like a solid working edge. So there you go. Best so far. Thanks for watching. Peace out.